Hey guys, it's Rogway here and today we are doing another tutorial. Today we're talking about some of the filters and effects that Photoshop has built into it. We're also going to look at some dynamic lighting um, and also the new oil paint feature that Photoshop has. Again, kind of a neat effect. So let's get started. I'm going to start with the image Cold Morning and I'm going to open it with Photoshop. This is just a really nice sunset or sunrise photo and I thought it was a good candidate to show you how some of these new filters work. Um, again, if you haven't used filters before, they're just a really nice easy way to add an effect to your image without having to worry about following a tutorial or trying to you know customize the look. Um, personally, I would rather create my own effects but I'll show you some of the ones that are pre-made here and um, if you can use them, great. So under filter, we have a filter gallery. So we're going to go to filter, filter gallery. And in the filter gallery, at the bottom left of the window here, we're just going to zoom it out so we can see our entire image. All right, that's probably too far. There we go, 50%. And along the side inside the filter gallery, we got all these different filters, all these different things that we can do to this image to give it a certain effect that we might like. All right, so I'm going to go through these really quick. I'm going to just show you what they look like and um, I'll try to explain as I go. So the artistic one, as far as I can tell, are mainly artistic or um, artsy sort of effects. Now, this one doesn't seem to work very well. Colored pencil, cut out, kind of makes a cartoony sort of look. Dry brush, okay, you can't really tell very easily, but it does look like it's been brushed on there. Okay, film grain, it makes it look grainy. All right, I'm not gonna go through each one or explain each one, but you can experiment here and you can see that you can kind of make it look a little more artistic. Their palette knife kind of looks more like a drawing, you know? So let's say you wanted a, uh, a painting for your living room, but you didn't want to paint it. Well, maybe some of these will work. Plastic wrap, I have no idea what the point of this one is but uh, it allows it to look like it's wrapped in plastic. And for each of these, you got all these options along the side, so I can, you know, make it look different by tweaking each of these options. I could add more detail to it. I can add, you know, higher highlight, whatever I want to do. Post dredges, I'm just going to go through these quick. Rough pastels, smudge stick, sponge, underpainting, watercolor, all right, so you can see how each one varies. They, uh, they look different. And then we're going to go into brush strokes. Okay, this one actually makes it look like it was, uh, it was brushed on or painted on. Uh, angled strokes, kind of an interesting effect. Cross hatching, dark strokes, ink outlines. Whoops, I didn't really let dark strokes show you what it looks like. Splatter, or sorry, spatter. Sprayed strokes. Sumi E. <laughs> distort. All right, now this is going to actually distort the image as it says. It's going to change the way it looks. So diffuse glow. This is kind of a nice one. Kind of gives your photos a dreamy sort of glow. All right. Glass makes it look like you're looking through a pane of glass. Ocean ripple. Okay, makes it look like water on top of your image. Sketch. Now all of these, or mo most of these are black and white. All right, so it makes it look like a sketch. Now, I don't really think they look that sketchy-like, but perhaps if you had a certain type of photo that you needed uh, to look like this, well, you can go through this very quick and easy and just see what it looks like. All right, stylize. The only one in there, glowing edges. That's what that looks like. Now, this is really cool if you do it with people's faces but I haven't found much use for that. Texture is kind of cool. It adds a texture to the overall image, which gives it a different feel. So crackler, grain we saw earlier, mosaic, mosaic tiles, so it looks like it's made of little tiles. Patchwork is kind of cool. I could maybe see a use for this. It turns it into a little, almost like a pixelated image, and you can increase the, the square sizes or you can make them smaller. I think that's, it's kind of cool. All right, I don't know. I don't know if I'd ever use it, but it's kind of neat. Stained glass. 
All right, it makes everything look like it's little panes of glass. Texturizer. Again, texturizer here might be useful if you're printing on canvas and you want to give it that canvas look. All right, so anyways, I'm going to hit OK on the last one here and I'm going to save it. So that one is called, we didn't really change much. This one's called filter. That's what I'm going to call it. I'm going to save it. If this comes up, by the way, just always bring it up to 12 maximum so it doesn't lose much detail. Ideally, if we didn't want to lose any detail, we would save it as either Photoshop or TIFF or something so that we didn't lose any quality, but for the tutorial, it's okay. Next, we're going to open up oil paint. And I chose this picture, and I do want to really quickly say that I take no uh, actual responsibility for these photos. I, um, I'm just doing it for educational purposes here to show you how these filters work. Now, this one here already has a really neat sort of effect to it. It almost looks like a drawing. Maybe it even is. I, I don't know, but I, I don't think so. It, it has photo qualities to it, but I thought this is a perfect candidate for what I wanted to show here. Uh, we're going to look at the oil paint filter, and that's under filter oil paint. Now, this one's really cool, and maybe, again, maybe there's a use for this. When you go into the oil paint filter, uh, you have a bunch of options. You have stylization, first of all, which determines, it seems to determine how long your brush strokes are. All right, and you can see that it really makes an interesting painting type look. Cleanliness, okay, are they really harsh or can we bring them up and make them really smooth? All right, so it all looks like, you know, liquid oil paints. Scale, how big are the brushes? Are they small? Are they big? All right. And you can see it's really cool as you change it. Brush, bristle detail. Okay, how much bristles can we see in the strokes? All right, so I'm going to pull that down a bit. Angular direction. What direction is the light coming from? And how much does it shine? All right, do we want a really shiny? Like you could tell that every, you can see every stroke that was, or do we want it very soft? Now, see, I think that looks really cool. When you bring the shine down, you really get to see what the strokes look like. All right, so you can kind of see that this maybe has some potential uh, for artistic photography, taking your photos and making them look like they're drawn. And as you can see in this case here, it does make a really interesting effect. If I pull it right down, it looks more like a, well, it's still a painting type, but it looks like a drawing. As I start to bring this up, those lines start to get stretched more. And you can kind of see how that makes a neat effect. Again, whether you guys use it or not, I don't know, but it's pretty cool. So I'm going to hit OK. And I'm just going to save this as oil paint to the desktop. Same thing, always pull that up to maximum, hit OK. Let's look at one more. And the last one we're going to look at is called lighting. So open that up with Photoshop. This one is probably the most uh, relevant to photography here. The other two were obviously just filtered effects. But now we're going to look at how we can change our lighting dynamically if let's say that we weren't happy with the lighting that we had in our photo to begin with. All right, so we're going to go to filter. I'm going to go to render and I'm going to go to lighting effects. Now in old versions of Photoshop, this menu was not nearly as advanced as it is now. So you'll notice that when I do that, I get a, a spotlight that I can place on my subject and I can make it larger and, and more pronounced like that. Or uh, you'll notice there's this little wheel in the middle that I can pull and I can make it brighter or darker. I can also make those changes over here in intensity. All right, and I can make all sorts of other changes we'll talk about right away. But I'm not going to add a spotlight, okay, even though you can see how that comes across. We're going to go to presets up in the corner here, and I'm going to start with a flashlight, okay, about halfway up, flashlight. And I'm going to pull that over our subject's face. Now you'll notice that um, it's really bright, first of all, it's washing out all the detail in her face, so I could pull down my intensity so it's not quite as bright. 
Also, I can put my mouse directly on the green line. Okay, if I don't, I'm moving it around. But if I put it directly on the green line, it turns into a yellow line. There it is, right there. It's very touchy. And then I can scale my flashlight up a bit, okay, to uh, make it a little more on her face. The neat thing about this new window or this new uh, menu that they've created is I can add additional lights. I can go up to the top menu and I can click another light. Let's say I want to add another flashlight. I can add a new point light. And there's my second light. And I'm going to put it on her hand here. I'm going to scale it down so it's more on her hand. And I'm going to move it. Whoops, too bright. Change the intensity to what I think looks good and leave it over there. I'm going to add another light. This one to her other hand. And if you're here, I'm going to talk about this in a sec, but let's just get these in place. All right, I'm going to scale back the intensity on this light a bit. And as you can see, I can control the lighting of the shot, even though the shot's already had, it's already been lit. It's already taken with a certain type of light. I can modify that. Now, the cool thing is on the right-hand side that I can modify any of these lights. I can always go back and I can change them. So if I go back to light one, I think it's too intense. I can pull that down. All right now, maybe light number three is a little low, so I can go to that one. I can bring it up a bit. All right, whoa, way too much. And I can go back to number two and maybe bring it up a bit. Okay, so that's, judge, that's just using the um, point lights. Now I'm going to show you the spotlight, which we kind of looked at earlier. I'm going to put a spotlight, uh, let's see, where do I want to put it? Coming from the corner. Uh, maybe from this corner here. And you can see that I can rotate it, change the angle that it's coming from. Kind of looked at this earlier. I can make it brighter by opening it up. All right. I can actually go now and delete light one because now I have a spotlight there instead. I can also go in here and increase the intensity of it so that it looks like it's kind of coming from the corner. And with any of these lights, it doesn't matter which one I'm using, I can go and I can change the color of it so that it looks like maybe a gel was added to the light when I took the photo. So I can go to color. And I find that softer colors seem to work a little better. So let's say I'm going to go with a bluish type of a gel. There we go. And you can see that that light turns whatever color I want it to be. Kind of adds an interesting effect. All right. So we've looked at point lights, which are our flashlights in this case. We've looked at spotlights. Let's look at one more. It's called an infinite light. And an infinite light is a light source that is infinite, like the sun. It's um, coming from a certain direction, and it's being applied to the entire image, kind of like ambient light. So I'm going to click that. And obviously my, well, not obviously, but my picture goes really bright. And I get this kind of 3D shape in the middle. I'm going to grab this little arm. And you'll see that I can rotate the direction of the light. I can also change the intensity of it. But what this does is it nicely adds a light overall from whatever direction I choose. Now, obviously, you can see some of these lights have become too bright because of it. So I can always go back and change those after. But I like to use the um, infinite light as a good... Um, a good light for colorizing my scene. So you'll notice with infinite light, if I change it to let's say a bluish one, it's going to colorize the whole picture. It's not going to just colorize where that spotlight is or where that flashlight is. It's going to colorize the whole picture. And I like that. I'm going to just go back to this one. I'm going to increase the intensity a little bit. Same with this one down here on our lower hand. I'm going to bring it down a bit. You can see that with this window, I can really change the lighting that I have in my shot pretty quickly and easily. All right, there is one other thing I'm going to show you. If I have my infinite light on, this will work with any light, I can turn on a texture. So I can turn on, let's say, the blue channel to add some texture to that wall. See all that texture that got brought out if I turn that off? See how it just looks plain and no detail to it? If I turn on the texture, it finds all the contrasty areas and I can actually, you know, make a bit of a shadow on the wall on that texture and it's really kind of cool. 
All right, it brings out all that detail. Like I said, I'm gonna just make some changes as I go. I'm gonna tweak this here to what I think looks good, and then I'm gonna hit OK up at the top. So there's our photo before, there it is after. Like I said, if you wanna add some dramatic lighting, very easy to do and very interactive, which I like because you can kinda of see what the result's gonna be right away. And here's one other little cool thing about it. I can always go back to filter, render, lighting effects, and guess what? All my lights are still saved there, and I can tweak them anytime. It doesn't just disappear as soon as I hit OK. They're all still there. So that's kind of neat as well. Um, aside from that, again, uh, you may or may not find a use for that but it does make a nice effect and, and depending on how you use it, like I said, you can really change the way that your scene was lit. All right, add a real moody sort of look to your picture. It makes it look like you spent way more time on your lighting than you probably actually did. But uh, as with anything, you need to start with a good photo before you can kind of do these things because you're not gonna be able to take, well, very rarely you're gonna be able to take a. Uh, a not so good photo and, and turn it into something magical just by doing that. Anyways, I hope you learned something from this. Um, make sure you apply it to your images. I'm going to just save this. Or I'm going to call it lighting and I'm going to put it to the desktop. I'm going to save that. All right, until next time, hope you use these uh, techniques. Talk to you later.